In this video, we'll discuss the effects of motor neuron lesion in terms of muscle tone and spasticity. So what are the features that indicate a motor neuron lesion? Weakness with changes in muscle tone, muscle bulk, and stretch reflex are the features that indicate a motor neuron lesion. So what's muscle tone and how does it occur? And what's the structure involved in hypertonia? Tone is resistance to passive stretch. A normal muscle tissue remains in a state of slight contraction all the time except in REM sleep. And this is due to what? This is due to the activity of the gamma neuron on the intrafusal fiber stretch reflex or muscle spindle. How many types of hypertonia? There are three types of hypertonia or increased muscle tone is spasticity number two rigidity and number three paratonia spasticity occurs due to a lesion of the pyramidal tract or pyramidal hypertonia whereas rigidity is due to the disorders of the extrapyramidal tract immediately after the upper motor neuron lesion or pyramidal tract lesion muscles are flexed and relax and the muscle length increases or they are stretched after a few days and weeks due to increased muscle length or muscle stretch the stretch reflexes increases that leads to spasticity so let's discuss the spasticity now spasticity is increase in tone due to pyramidal tract it's more in anti-gravity muscles that is flexors of the upper limb and extensors of the upper lower limb so what's the cause of spasticity spasticity occur as a result of imbalance between the the excitatory and inhibitory signals from the brain and the spinal cord. The primary theory is an interruption of inhibitory signal along the spinal cord which result in increased excitation and therefore an imbalance. This is the supraspinal pathway when it's inhibited or interrupted. It inhibits normally the alpha and gamma motor neuron which are excitatory in nature. When this inhibitory action is gone, the alpha motor neuron that innervates the extra fusal fibers and causes contraction so the contraction is increased and the gamma motor neuron that innervates the intrafusal fiber spindles in the intrafusal fiber that excites the 1a fibers to cause increase in stretch reflex so as a result of inhibition of the supraspinal pathways there is increased excitability of the alpha motor neuron and a gamma motor neuron whereas there is decreased excitability of the inhibitory fibers 1a 1b fibers and the Renshaw cells this causes relaxation of the antagonistic muscles so there is presynaptic inhibition it is decreased and there is reciprocal inhibition is decreased that is caused by the 1a1b fiber and the Renshaw cells the alpha motor neuron excitability is increased and also a gamma motor neuron and a muscle spindle sensitivity is increased that causes muscle contraction and increase in stretch reflex spasticity depends on afferent feedback of proprioceptive information from muscles joint and skin receptors it is inherently dependent on afferent feedback Back from the muscles and what's presynaptic inhibition modulation of afferent stimulus by the descending tract so any loss in these tract will be reflected as a loss in the presynaptic inhibition the other feature of spasticity is that it's velocity dependent there's a rapid buildup of resistance in passive flexion the velocity dependent increase in muscle tone lead to increase muscle jerks and resulting from hyper excitability of the stretch reflex what are the disabilitating features of the spasticity muscle overactivity of tissue shortening and paresis are the three major disabilitating factor in a spastic paresis of the upper motor neuron what are the positive components in the spasticity muscle overactivity hyperreflexia Class snipe, Babinski positive or extensor plantar response are the positive components. And what are the negative? Negative components are weakness, early hypotonia, paralysis, T and loss of extremity. It's a spastic gait. Spastic gait may be due to two causes, cerebral or cervical myelopathy. Cervical myelopathy may be due to spondylosis, myelinating diseases and trauma. Cerebral leg spasticity is due to stroke multiple sclerosis or cerebral palsy symmetry is common limb is also involved dysarthria is also present there is a tendency to circumduct and scuff the feet patient may walk toes In extreme cases legs may be crossed due to the overactivity of the adductors stiff person syndrome decreased lumbar lordosis and overactivation of the antagonist muscles which restricts trunk and lower limb movements and results in a wooden or fixed posture and what are the side effects usually these drugs cause sedation and dizziness